let's talk about how we wire up PLC inputs and outputs. Uh, I'm assuming you know how to wire up a power supply, taking 120 volts uh, AC current to the positive and negative terminal, and then that power supply converts that power into uh, 24 volts DC. We're going to talk about DC because generally speaking with control circuits, everything is in DC. Now, sometimes output cards can be wired AC or um, different voltages of you know, like 12 volts DC or something like that. But I'm going to just stick with 24 volts DC. And, what, and, and so if I have an input, one of the things that I need to identify with my input card is identify how it takes the power. Do I, do I expect the power to be grounded through the input card or do I expect the power to be grounded through the components? The, the, thing, the terminology for this is going to is sinking and sourcing. Okay? If something is sinking, if it's a sinking input card, that means the negative volt, the, the negative terminal is effectively inside the car and it's grounding through the car. Ground through card. And if it's sourcing, it means it's grounding through input. Or I'm going to say component because that will make more sense in a second. Okay? Every input card is going to say, or output card for that matter, will say sinking or sourcing. Well, what does that look like? So here's my positive, and in black I have my negative. That way you can kind of get a sense of, of how the grounding works. And if I bring a wire over, and let's just say this is a push button, general, normally open push button, I will then wire this to my input card. Let me make it pretty. So here's my input card. Input card. And we'll call that I dot I one dot one. Okay? Just go with it. It could be anything. But every terminal on an input card has one screw to it. And it's going to be labeled some way. So I'm going to just call this I. I1.1, okay? And so I'm gonna take a positive voltage to one side of my switch and then run the, the negative to the other, to the screw terminal. So that'll go right into that screw terminal. Then, somewhere else on the input card, because these input cards are usually long, so it's gonna, so they have a bunch of little screws, you know, so on and so forth. I'm gonna put another at the very bottom or somewhere else on that screw terminal, there will be something that says DC common. Okay? And that implies that I need to then wire that screw terminal to a negative or a ground. Not an actual physical ground, ground in DC. All right, because what this is effect effectually doing is when I push this button, 24 volts gets sent to this input card. When it recognizes 24 volts, the uh, light, an optical sensor uh, gets tripped because it's all opt optically isolated, and a light turns on on the input card that corresponds to this terminal number. Because then, then the power will go to ground to complete the circuit. So. This is considered how you would, this is how you would wire up a sinking input card. And generally speaking, in the United States, this is how we do things, okay? Um, if I would reverse this, and do I have some space over here? Yeah, this So if I would write, write this like this,
VDC plus, then I 1.1. One one. Oops. So what I just did there is I basically just flipped how this works in the circuit. Notice I, I fed a 24 volt power source to something called a VDC positive, and then out the input, I'm feeding something to the, an, a push button. But then when the push button engages, it grounds out the circuit to the negative terminal. This here would be considered a sourcing input because the input card is providing power to the switch. Okay? So this is really popular in Japan because they tend to do a lot of sourcing that way. If I would hook up an input on my Motoman robots through the terminal blocks, that's how I would do it because that's how it's wired. But again, it ground, so this is actually, has 24 volts almost at all times, but when this closes out, and then this sends a signal through, basically making this potential difference zero, because it's just a closed circuit, that's when the light turns on, okay? If I were to put a meter across this when the switch is not engaged, that would be 24 volts. If I put it across here when the switch is not engaged, it will give me zero push the switch, put a meter across this component, it should give me 24. Okay? This should give me zero at this point, push the switch, then it, gives me, then it should give me 24. See the difference? Well, I can also do outputs as well. Once again, I supply 24 volts, to an output card, VDC common, for instance, a VDC plus, to that terminal screw. And then down here, something that says, like, out one, out that one, I don't, I don't know, out that one. I will then feed that to, let's just say a light. Okay, a red light. And then that grounds off. This is considered a sourcing output. Because I'm supplying power to, the, to here, and then when the logic dictates, it flips on a switch inside the output card, and that sends power to the red light. So if, if I go from here to here, it's going to be, if the, if the output is not on, reading if I go from a voltmeter from here to here, it's going to give me 24 volts. If the output is on, it will give me zero. Same is true right here. If the output is not on, and the light is not on, that will give me zero volts. But if the light is on, because the output is on, it's going to give me 24 because of the voltage drop right there. This is, this is how most outputs work in the United States. So if you're going to have to remember one, it's this, these two right here. And I'll show you what this practically looks like in another video. But this is the theory. And if I wanted to just show you the other way, Sinking output. So it's important to read the card and see what it says. And I'll give you a zoom up here in a second. 
so that you can actually see this. But this is a quick and dirty. But again, in this case, I'm supplying power right here at all times. So basically, this is where it's also an open direct. And if, I, if the output is not on, if I go across here like this, I should read 24 volts. But when the output turns on, I should read zero volts across this because I'm grounding through this out through. This is an open ground. Reason why we don't really do this here in America, because say what, what happens if I come along and short this to ground, then this output is on. So if it's controlling motor or other things, this is a live circuit, and so if this shorts, then it, it, it turns on. But here, there's no power being supplied because this is being controlled. Also, if I'm doing it this way, I can kill this here, and I can shut all my outputs off at one time. Here, it just opens the ground and it becomes a little more dangerous. But again, some robots are wired this way. Japanese may wire things this way. So it just depends on the convention, so always know what you're doing. So let me zoom in, let me help you zoom in on this a little bit so you can get a better look. Okay? And this will be what I'm trying to leave. So, you know, syncing means ground through the, uh, the card, sourcing means ground through the component, and you should be able to get a better look at how the wiring diagram looks on a syncing input card or a sourcing input card or a syncing uh, output or a sourcing output. Okay? This is how we wire output cards, no matter what, you, what type you have. So it's important that you read the technical documentation. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to physically wire it up. And that's what we'll be doing in class in week three.